muchachos, muchachas. I'm here in Spain, and I've actually uh, just had an opportunity to drive a Spanish automobile for the first time for the last couple days, which is the, I don't know what year, I think it's like a 2019 or 2020, but it's a uh, Seat Leon FR. Um, and as you can see, it's a station wagon, which is awesome. Uh, not my first color choice, but I think it looks pretty good. Um, it's kind of got an Audi-esque front end. Uh, you can see it's got like sensors for parking. The European license plates, which I think a lot of people agree, look a lot cooler than the American plate setup. Um, I think the headlights look pretty good. Front end is pretty good, pretty aggressive for a wagon. It's got a nice hood. Um, I think the FR version is supposed to be like a more performance sporty oriented version um, so the wheels I think are supposed to be a little bit bigger uh, it's supposed to have a better suspension and um, there's like FR badging on the back which I don't remember what that stands for but I can look it up in to open the trunk which you can see is not as is quite spacious there's a non-existent spare tire diaper bag fan since it's hot as balls in Madrid and uh, you can see I'm up like super early trying to finish talking about this car that I've been driving. So basically we um, were supposed to leave like two days ago uh, to go back to Virginia, but the our flight got canceled and we ended up having to stay for a couple days. Oh no. Um, so we decided to rent a car and we got this... Uh, Seat Leon wagon and uh actually when I did the rental car reservation I just put like I think the category was like Ford Focus or similar so was, you know just based on like the size of the car or whatever price and um and they just gave us this which I was pretty excited about because uh I think wagons are cool I've never driven a Seat before um and we're in Spain, so it's cool to drink like, or to drink, to, uh, to drive a, um, a Spanish vehicle in Spain. And, uh, this thing has been surprisingly fun. Um, I, I don't know how much horsepower it has. I try to do some, some sleuthing on the internet and it's gotta be somewhere between 150 and 200 horsepower. Um, so not like crazy, but it, it definitely has enough power. Um, especially when you're already like in motion, when you're already going, it's got, it carries speed pretty well. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty good driving experience. Uh, seats are comfortable. You can see the design right there. Uh, they did give us an infant car seat for my five month old, which is nice. Um, I can show you a little bit more about the interior. Hang on. So you can see the uh, six speed manual. It's got a little touch screen. Uh, one complaint I do have um, is that like the, the HVAC controls are through the touch screen. Um, I think you can also do something on the lower part of the screen, but I didn't play around with it too much. Um, there are buttons on the steering wheel, not super intuitive, um, but not awful. And, uh, and there's also a screen, um, that has a bunch of variation behind the, I mean, the dash basically has, um, like a few different screens you can go depending on what kind of information you want to, um, what kind of information you want to, uh, share. And here's the steering wheel. It's the Seat logo. Um, I think it's pretty cool, pretty comfortable. 
Um, here's the door controls for the mirror and the um, windows. Shifter is pretty nice. Uh, kind of reminds me of um, a few Volkswagen GTIs that I've driven. Got some storage here. A um, couple of, uh, I guess, a cup holder, and I guess you could put something small here, like maybe a tiny can of something. Um, yeah. I think the design is pretty sweet on the interior. Like, there's some sort of, uh, I don't know what the theme is on the, on the shapes, but, um, it kind of has like sharper angles and I actually think it looks pretty good. Um, you can kind of see it also on the, uh, on the inserts for the, for the seats. Yeah. Oh, and there's also a little storage thing here. It's got like, I, I don't know if you can see it in the dark. It's got like micro, um, USB-C or USB-C or whatever it's called. Um, yeah. And then there's, uh, some controls up here above the mirror. Um, thankfully did not have to use the SOS. Um, uh, didn't really have to mess around too much with anything. Mirror. Light. Pretty standard. Um, back seats got pretty decent space. The trunk is, um, really big. Uh... And, um, yeah, I would say if I lived in Spain or somewhere else in Europe, this would definitely be a car I would look at. Um, it's got, uh, pretty decent brakes. It's, it's reasonably fun to drive and, uh, you can get up to pretty good speeds with no problem. So I am a fan of the Seat Leon FR and, uh, I wouldn't. White would not be my first choice of color, but um, I think it looks pretty good with the wheels and like the black accents. Um, yeah, it's definitely a, one of the better cars that I've rented um, on a, you know, on a road trip. So yeah, pretty cool. Nice job, Seat. Well done. One thing I will kind of complain about and this is not really that big of a deal, is um, the start engine button is here, um, right next to the manual transmission. I'm always like reaching over to look for it over here. Uh, it's got a like a small button that you pull up for the parking brake, which, you know, it's becoming more standard. Um, I'm not sure what the lock sim symbol button is for, uh, but this, I believe, is the function for um, for holding the brake. Like you, once you, if you activate, actually, no, that's not right. I think this is the, okay, now I'm confused. I can't remember. Because this kind of looks like the starts, automatic start stop button. But this car did not have like automatic stop start that I could tell. So, um, I don't know. Oh, another thing I wanted to talk about while I'm, uh, while well, I'm still here, this so this is the third time that I've driven in Europe. The first time was I drove a little bit in Norway, um, and the second time I did my wife and I did a road trip in Portugal. And this is the first time I drove in Spain. I drove quite a bit yesterday and uh, um, the day before, like. America, guys, you got to get better at driving. I, I The only complaints I had here, uh, shockingly, were, you know, the occasional aggressive BMW driver, like, flying up the, the interstate at excessive speeds or, like, riding my ass. But everybody else here knows how to drive. They use their turn signals. They keep right except to pass. They are not swerving all over the fucking place because they're looking at their phone. They all know what they're doing and it, and they all drive shockingly well. They all know how to use roundabouts. They all know how to come to a stop at a stop sign. They all know how to yield. They all know how to get up to highway speeds. All things that 
a shocking number of American drivers have no clue what they're doing. No clue how to do them. It's so much less stressful driving in Europe than it is driving in America. Guys, got to do better. You got to do better. Show you how it looks on startup. So one thing I actually, I really like on the interior is this, you see this blue light that goes around the front. It just looks okay right now, but at night it looks really cool. And you can see here like the AC. Oh, also I did mention it has CarPlay, which is nice. But if you want to do like the AC stuff, it's like, uh, there's all sorts of stuff in the, in, loaded in the touch screen, which is not my favorite thing. Um, here, I like this view because it has the tachometer and the speedometer, um, but you can change through a few different um, display screens on the uh, on the dash. But yeah, that one's cool. And then also, this is like another one. It's just a different um, design for speed and um, the tachometer. I think I like the two circles best. It's got a cool little picture of the Seat Leon. And uh, I think the red and white is a nice touch for this car. So, very cool Seat, very cool. Um, another thing, I was not super familiar with the company, but I read that it was originally like a government run industrial manufacturing company. I think it started in the 1960s and quickly became the biggest Spanish automaker um, and then sometime in the, I want to say the mid 1980s, they, they were sold by the Spanish government to the Volkswagen group where they've remained a part of ever since. But I mean, obviously like, I think there's little subtle things that you can kind of tell, um, that it was, uh, that it was, that it's owned by Volkswagen or manufactured, I mean, run by Volkswagen, but there's definitely, you know, differences in the styling and, um, little things that make it clear it's not and just a, like another Volkswagen car. So, yeah. There's a pretty large couple of carry-ons in the trunk. You can see it still has a pretty good amount of space. Pretty impressive. Wagon. Can you close the trunk, Myanmar? Using the diaper bag as a makeshift tripod while I drive the Seat Leon FR to the airport. Clutch super light, shifter great. What's so funny back there? Bumps. Once you get up like above 3,000 RPMs, it does pretty good. I'm trying to run over this guy on his bicycle. Roundabouts everywhere. Much more efficient than intersections everywhere in America. back there.
much acceleration, too much power. I'll miss you, Seat Leon Station Wagon. Bye. Thanks for checking out my channel. If you're new to my channel and you like my video, please hit subscribe and uh, keep an eye out for more on my uh, Fox Body Mustang project, the Dude Stang, and car reviews and sandwiches and whatever else. Um, hope you're staying healthy. Hope you're staying safe. Peace out.